We're back, Dave Vellante here with Jeff Kelly. This is reInvent 2013, and you're watching theCUBE, Silicon Angle's live production. We go out to the events, we drop in our mobile studio, we find the best guests, and we bring them to you, extract the signal from the noise, share with you our audience. We appreciate all the tweets that you've been sharing with us this week, all the questions that have been coming in. John Rooney's here, he's the director of developer marketing at Splunk. John, this is like, heaven for you, because we're just surrounded by developers. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic show. We were here last year, and uh, we were just completely blown away by uh, not only the number of people here, the quality of folks here, a lot of our partners are here, and it really feels like a, a huge center of gravity in the space. I mean, the development community has, you know, it, it will coalesce around, you know, major initiatives. Uh, you're certainly seeing that with, with OpenStack now, yeah. a lot of enthusiasm there, but, but Amazon really is the icebreaker here. Talk about the, the, the developer community, how Splunk looks at the, the developer community. Yeah, I mean, I think we've, uh, we've realized, like a lot of other folks have realized, that uh, developers really are key stakeholders, not only for sort of classic technology selection, but like sort of driving that technology forward. And uh, cloud, for example, you know, the, a lot of the early use cases, and I'm sure uh, AWS would say the same thing, was developers looking to spin up environments without working through traditional IT channels. And that, that you know, ease of use and that quick time to value is a big part of it. And um, from a Splunk standpoint, we look at developers as being huge enablers of sort of driving the value that Splunk delivers um, from, in terms of of providing operational intelligence and the data across the uh, enterprise and in different ways. And that could be integrating insights from data into other systems uh, within, uh, within the organization, so integrating it into a line of business applications, building applications on top of it, um, you know, really looking at, and also looking at how to utilize you know, operational intelligence across the entire product development lifecycle and things like DevOps and continuous uh, integration and continuous deployment, which are all, again, sort of tip of the spear. So we've been having crowd chats all week. It's our, it's our application that we use to interact with our, with our audience. We've been talking about the, the, you know, Amazon turning the data center into an API. Yep. We talk about the API economy, the data economy. Your shirt says REST, yes. you know, all caps, RESTfully, yes. APIs for the wicked. Yes. What does that mean? Well, and I think it's, it's really, uh, we just wanted to make sure that uh, you know, Splunk, uh, Splunk is a platform, and we really w want to invest in that, and we think about that as a platform. So everything, if you are familiar with Splunk, have seen Splunk, a lot of times you focus on, oh, what does the UI look like and the drag and drop and the, and the dashboards, but there's a, there's a, a REST API um, layer that sits on top of the engine that developers can programmatically do everything that you can do in the, in, in the API uh, via, via the, or via, in the UI via that API. So we really want to make sure that it's an open platform, it's an extensible platform, it's extensible in terms of getting data in, it's in, extensible in terms of getting data out, it's extensible in terms of building applications on top of it, and uh, we really wanted to, you know, the restful part of it is we want to, you know, bring our technology to where developers live. So web open standards like, like REST and in ensuring that we have support for popular languages, your JavaScripts, your, your Java, your PHP, your Rubies, and that, you know, we, that we sort of address the polyglot of developer tools and languages out there. So talk about um, AWS, yes. what the relationship is, you're part of the ecosystem, yes. where do you fit, and what are you guys doing together? Uh, so we're doing a lot of different things. Um, the, yesterday, um, we are one of the partners for, for the Cloud Trails announcement, which is a huge, I think, a huge value Great announcement yeah. for both our customers and AWS customers. Yeah, describe Cloud Trails for the audience. Sure, it is uh, basically it is uh, a mechanism uh, by which uh, AWS customers can derive uh, log information from popular uh, AWS services, so they can so they can uh, view access control, utilization, like what are people actually doing? Performance, performance. we're talking about uh, performance this yes. morning, yeah. So, and, and what, what we, uh, our integration point is, and it's a, it's a perfect use case for, for Splunk and the Splunk platform, is we ingest that data, and then you're able to visualize, and there's a Splunk for AWS app that's available now uh, via the Splunk uh, app marketplace, that enables you to see uh, not only uh, usage data, performance data, billing data, so how, you know, what is the utilization of reserved instances, to give folks that sort of full 360 operational view into what are your investments in AWS. And I think it's, it's, it's a huge step forward. I think it, um, it, it provides a lot of folks, uh, folks a lot of the visibility and access into what's going on into my, into sort of my little section of the cloud that I'm, that I'm, uh, that I'm using on AWS in a way that maybe they, they were used to in a sort of a non-prem So you're going to help people save money. You saw the slide Andy put up uh, the other day, 143 million 
saved and proactively Amazon shooting on email, say, hey, if you did this, you could save a bunch we of want, dough. We right? want to arm our customers with as much information to sort of, uh, yeah, ma ma make the right investments on their part. And then and you're a key part of that, but that, you know, to me that's so brilliant, uh, Jeff, you know, we talk about this all the time, because if you provide that information to customers, you cut their, their, their costs, what, what do they do with that savings? Buy more stuff, yeah, so they yeah. can innovate more, and so this is, that's, that's the, the customer version of the flywheel, right? So yeah, yeah so I, I want to talk to you a little bit more about uh, Splunk Cloud. So you announced sure. this at uh, dot .com. Yes. Uh, and so Splunk Cloud is running on AWS. Yes, it is. Correct? Um, so talk a little bit about that offering. Sure. Uh, what, you know, and, and specifically how AWS makes it possible. Yeah, and I mean, we've, uh, so we've actually had uh, an offering in the cloud for a while. We have Splunk Storm, which is still available mm -hmm. uh, as a free service for developers. And what we had, well, you know, the, a lot of the conversations that we've had with customers over the years, and I'm, you know, we are not unique um, in the sense that, you know, as, as customers, a lot of our, you know, large enterprises, we're moving more and more workloads to the cloud, and these are, you know, some of the things that AWS is certainly uh, enabling and driving. Um, they were saying, we, want, we would like to consume and use Splunk in the cloud as a service. Um, we love Splunk, we want Splunk as is, the full range of, of capabilities the full platform with uh, all of the REST API en endpoints, the application model, uh, alerting, all of the features that have really, um, you know, that, that we've really tried to put in place to, to, to deliver value to our customers, they wanted to consume that as a cloud service. So um, that really is is what uh, Splunk Cloud is. It's Splunk in the cloud, Splunk Enterprise in the cloud. Well, right. So you, so some of your uh, competitors. So mm -hmm. we had Sumo Logic on yesterday, and uh, uh, Logly, uh, another competitor, both cloud-based, uh, you know, yes. SaaS-based uh, log management applications from the get-go, uh, have kind of called you guys out and said, you know, SaaS, uh, excuse me, uh, you know, Splunk Cloud really isn't a true SaaS offering. Uh, it's not a real cloud offering. Let's try to set the record straight here. What, what? What do you take from that that criticism, and, and how do you, how do you respond to that? I mean, I think we really focus on what are the you know what are we hearing for our customers, and how do we deliver value to our customers? And it is uh, it is a cloud offering in the sense that it provides uh, the flexibility, the time to value, the sort of moving of uh, of, of sort of the the burden of operations from you know sort of from the customer on prem to the to the vendor, all the things that uh, that that the cloud delivers. We're delivering that with Splunk Cloud. It's running in AWS. It is, you know, we are obviously partners and customers of AWS uh, in, in, in that in that regard, and uh, it's been really successful. And it's been, um, you know, it, it really has. It's not been, um, you know, it, it's it, it's been received extremely uh, warmly from our customers, and we're 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 going to continue to make investments in it. Well, I mean, I think it's it's somewhat understandable that those competitors would would go after Splunk on that. Um, you know, that's their value proposition is that we do what Splunk does, but we do it as a service. Well, and Splunk now, got it all started, right? I mean, you guys. Right. Kick and, and, and in fact, I think Logly is a former Splunker started. Maybe maybe it was Sumo Logic, but well, yeah. but you know, successful IPO, great valuation. So everybody's now saying, oh, right. we could do that. Right. When you're top <laughs> of the heap, you're going to get so, some so, arrows. So sure. Sure. Right. so so what gives you confidence that you can maintain the lead? Question. Well, I think you know, and it's the it's I think it's the the, the options across deployment and, and consumption. You know, how how can I you know because really we're about delivering the value of operational intelligence. It's, there's all this data. It's coming from a bunch of different sources. It's all over the place. How do I put it in one place and how do I get value out of it? And how do different types of folks get value out of it? Whether it's IT or the development organization or the business or sales. And so um, you know, different requirements are there in terms of how do I consume that. So that's why, for example, we have Splunk Cloud, which is a service, and another thing we announced yesterday is both Splunk and Hunk available in, in Amazon machine, machine images and AMIs in the Amazon marketplace. So for some customers, for their requirement set, it may make more sense for them to say, yes, we would like to run Splunk in the cloud, but we would like to run it in sort of a traditional IS model, right? They would you know, have access to the virtual machine and manage the virtual machine, and we want to enable that. Splunk Cloud is a different situation where um, and sort of the more traditional SaaS offering where it's like, I just want to show up with a login and my data and everything's going to work. Mm -hmm. And Splunk, you're going to make everything work. And that's really, you know, that's our investment there. And then of course, we obviously have uh, a fair amount of customers who are still and will continue to say, it makes the most sense for us and our use cases in our business to run Splunk uh, on-prem or in a virtual private cloud or you know, all of those things. And we want to be able to enable that, that, that sort of range of choice with our so customers. So the hunk on an Amazon machine image, the, the yes. former example that you gave, that, that's a, what, a bring your own 
uh, license. Yes. So bo the both the the Hunk and the Splunk AMIs are bring your own license, and that's and that's Hunk on top of EMR. So that's you know that's a, there, there's a big um, there's a big value add there for folks that let's say they've uh, decided um, hey like I'd like to spin up some Hadoop clusters. They've decided that Amazon's the right partner for us. They have data in EMR, and they're looking for for ways that. You know, I want to derive intelligence from that data. I want, I want to explore that data, and they're familiar with uh, sort of how what Splunk has done in the traditional machine and IT data uh, um, area, and that's that's really what Hunk is Splunk Analytics on top of Hadoop. So, Amazon prides itself on on pricing transparency. Yes. Um, but when you go look at the whole pricing models on Amazon site, the bring your own license, one of the things it says there is that for BYOL the ISV is required, you know, uh, encouraged, I'm not sure the exact language, it's kind of fuzzy, to list on the marketplace, the AWS marketplace. Mm -hmm. And in that instance, Amazon's going to take, you know, their 20% VIG and, and the ISV gets 80%. So, um, are you cool with that uh, as an ISV? Or? We are extremely happy with our partnership with, with Amazon. It's been, it's been great for, for so us no and our So no problem listing on the, on the marketplace, we right? Know. That's something you would, we're, you would, we're, be, told, yeah, you would, we, you would be fine with. We've been really happy with our partnership with Amazon. We're going to continue to drive uh, and do more interesting things like the, like the cloud trail. For so that kind of requirement them. doesn't scare you off at all. In fact, you, it sounds like you embrace that. Yeah, I mean, it really was, it's a, it's a tremendous uh, channel for us. And it's, you know, the same way we talked earlier about, um, you know, sort of why, we, why I wear rest yeah. for the wicked, we wanted to bring our technology and our, and our value to where the developers are. Think about cloud customers, you know, how do we, how do we bring what, you know, the value that we deliver on oper operational intelligence to where they are? Well, a lot of it is, they're, they're so in So that's AWS. interesting, so, that, so not every company's going to feel that way, I would predict, because you guys, if you're looking at it as an incremental opportunity. Mm -hmm. Wow, there's another distribution channel for people that don't, maybe don't know about Splunk. Listed on the Amazon marketplace, and it's also rising the, tide lifts all ships. It's also the right delivery model and use case for a, for a certain number of our customers, right? We want to make sure that we enable and we empower across all of those use cases, so. Yeah. Sensible. I'm not sure, Jeff Kelly, if Oracle's going to have that same attitude, but we'll see. Well, right. Yeah. Well, the, the cloud model totally screws up Oracle's business model, right? They they want well, but then again, you see Oracle's a partner, so it's well, absolutely. They have no choice. But <laughs> right, they, I think they're, they're being dragged kicking and screaming. They want to sell you a big box, put it in your data center, and then charge you a lot of maintenance yeah. over the years. So, right? what are you seeing, John, in terms of uh, of of, of EM, uh, EMR? What, what are you seeing for um, the uptake? What are the customers telling you about Elastic MapReduce and? I mean, I think it's it's it, it's it's been uh, you know in terms of the overall how do you, how do you reduce some of the complexity around anything with new technology, right? And I think EMR, you know, it's still the early days of Hadoop. It's still the early days of big data. Um, it still feels a little bit like you know assembling PC kits back in the late 70s <laughs> uh, and popular you know, mechanics. So it's another way of like how do we, how do you you know I'd like to use a, a, a big data solution but I don't I don't know how to use a soldering iron, right? So that's sort yeah. of the the EMR has been a great a great way. Of how do I, you know, spin up some Hadoop clusters, get data in there, um, make sure that I'm able to collect and capture all of this this sort of big data that's out there. And I think where we're trying to deliver value is, okay, great, the data's in there. What are you getting out of it? How do you know what's in there? How do you, how do you derive value out of that? And that's, you know, whether that's a uh, hunk on top of EMR or a hunk on top of Hadoop sitting anywhere else, that's really, um, that's, that's really sort of the, the and, and that's a request that came from customers. That's, that's where we're trying to play and that's where we're trying to, to help folks. Uh, so, uh, related questions. Uh, just curious to get your take on what you're seeing in the Hadoop market overall. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've got the, you know, the, the, the more, I guess you, if you call it, can call it traditional yeah. vendors, the on-premise Hadoop vendors, Cloudera and Hortonworks and MapR. Yeah. And now you've got, uh, you've got AWS with their EMR offering. How are you seeing that shake out? Are you seeing any trends among your customers looking more to EMR, talking more about Hadoop in the cloud? Have you seen any any shifts in, in kind of uh, deployment models or the way customers are looking at Hadoop? Yeah, I mean, I don't know that I could say that I personally or, or that that, that we have found uh, a specific winner in terms of deployment models or consumption models around Hadoop. I think what we found um, and really where we're trying to deliver some value is it sort of feels like it's the uh, there seems there seems to be a bit of a universal. Uh, POC that everyone's sort of doing. <laughs> like everyone's just kind of kicking the tires, figuring out what, all right, great, I had this in there. I read, you know, I read that big data is a big deal and I have, I spun up some Hadoop clusters. Or my boss read big data is yeah, a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw it in a blog post somewhere. But now, okay, here's the bits. What do I do with this? 
Um, what's the value? How do I, how is this worth my investment? How is this worth my investment in terms of people and time? And you know, and you think about just the, the, the classic um, kind of technology adoption model is, how is the, you know, the, the person that I'm going to hire tomorrow whose job will largely be driven by you know, acting on data in, 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 in very near real time and, and making decisions based on that data, how are they empowered by this technology? And that's where I think we're still a little bit of a chasm and where we're trying to, to play there. Mm -hmm. um, because if it's, if it's still a pretty small community of data scientists who have the, you know, the, um, the, the soldering irons of, of knowing how to, how, to, how, to, how to bolt together a bunch of Apache projects, it's, you know, it's, it's really not delivering value at scale um, to, 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 the, to the industry, and it, that's, it, that's really the chauffeur analogy, right? You know, I'm talking about in the early days of the automobile, the big concern was there aren't going to be enough chauffeurs. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, there aren't yeah. going to be enough data scientists. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, so. So, right, how, well how, do you, how do you solve that problem? You either, one, create more data scientists, or two, yeah. you make the tools easier to use so you don't need a data scientist. Yes. And, and realistically, you do both. Yeah, and, and I think, and that's where we're actually you know, looking at that, looking at that exact issue in a couple of different ways, and I think, um, and I'll, I have a little bit of bias on the developer side, um, but if you think about, you know, Honk or even Splunk I individually, you know, what we did with Splunk Six and some of the improvements to uh, the UI and, and things like uh, data models and Pivot is how do we enable sort of the, the folks outside of traditional IT to get data outside of Splunk. So again, so those folks are not chauffeurs for the data. So if I'm the business analyst, if I'm the person who classically would have been um, you know, working in Excel, for example, and writing Excel macros, how do we enable those folks to, to do their job and get value out of that data? And so a lot of that is, is focused on the user experience and making that, da that data easier to use. On the developer side is, you know, again, back to, back to the REST shirt, is how do we empower those developers with the skills they already have, right? And I think, you know, there's another great thing about the show, um, uh, A, everyone knows what the shirt means, um, but, you know, there are, there's, there's been such, a, such a, an explosion of, of sort of standards-based development, a little bit of a sort of a polyglot of, of different technologies, but RESTful is RESTful. It's sort of, it's, it's a little bit table stakes, but it's important to deliver. Um, nobody, nobody's questioning the value of APIs anymore. No one's right. questioning the value of sort of standards-based web development. And so we wanted to make sure that, okay, let's say you have, you have data sitting in HDFS, you have data sitting in Hadoop. If I'm, you know, you don't need a, you know, there, there, I'm sure there, there are scenarios for which you need to get a Stanford or, or Berkeley PhD to be, be a data scientist on top of it. But there are tens of millions of JavaScript developers out there who can build applications, who should be able to build applications powered by the data sitting, whether it's in HDFS or in Splunk, and that's really the investment, the, the, the core of the heart of the investments we're making in developers there. So there's already a huge community of, uh, of developers out there where, you know, the code academies of the world are growing more and more tomorrow. It's sort of the new fluency, right? Have your eight-year-old, you, know, you got to teach them how to code. Well, how do we enable th those folks with those skills? It's sort of the new, it's almost like the new information worker, right? The new, the, the, Enabling those folks to get um, value out of that data without, um, you know, well, without having to, to go through a graduate. Know, in program. the early days of the PC, you would go take uh, Lotus One Two Three training. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, I think the analogy applies. Right? Yeah. I mean, you, you, there's going to have to be some kind of training regimen because it's, you know, Pivot is great, yeah. awesome, but it's, you got to just pick it up and use it. Yeah. Right. You got to have. You know, some training, but once you're trained, you you could become a you know, do some serious damage. And on the developer side, we really you know the for both in Splunk Six, which we have this thing called the web platform, which is the 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 the, the layer that's backbone JS and and, and jQuery and the, these very sort of standards based technologies driving it. And Django is we looked at it and say we want building a Splunk a Splunk application, whether that's an application on Splunk Enterprise, an application on Hunk, an application on Splunk Cloud to look and feel like building any other web application, right? So if you have web development skills, if you have the sort of standards model view paradigm of web development skills, great, you can build a big data app. And we feel like we're, you know, there aren't that many folks that are sort of saying that or delivering that right now, and that's really yeah. where we feel like uh, we, can, we can deliver some Massive value. productivity gains, you know, yep. programmable infrastructure is, is, is obviously part of that, the whole DevOps movement, everybody wants to be on board, yeah. you guys are at the center of it. And then uh, in that way, the sort of big data investments of you know, 2011, 12, 13 of, I, I spun up a Hadoop cluster, <laughs> doesn't become a kitchen appliance that gathers dust because right. nobody knows how to use it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. John Rooney, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much, John.
Great to have you. Thank you. All right, keep it right there. We'll be right back with our next guest. We're live. This is theCUBE from reInvent 2013 from Las Vegas.